Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at integration for the first time in the second year, so we can answer questions from exercise 11a. Now, before you come on to this, I hope you've had lots of practice at differentiation, because a lot of what I'm going to say in this series of videos is just going to be, and it's the reverse of differentiation. So I want you to be really good at differentiation before you come on to these videos. But let's get started. So... Um, different integration really is just the reverse of differentiation. If you imagine that uh, f of x will differentiate to cos of x, then you can imagine what the integral of cos x is going to be. The integral of cos x is going to be the reverse of the differentiation. So if we've got a derivative of sine being cos, then the integral of cos is back to sine. Uh, and don't forget to plus C as well. On these uh, integration questions, it's really important that you plus C on the end. You can see why if you go back to the first year set of videos. <clears throat> For sine and cos, there's something that's quite handy to have at hand. Uh, we know that sine differentiates to cos. Cos differentiates to minus sine. If you were to differentiate minus sine, you would get minus cos. And if you were to differentiate minus cos, you would get sine. And it kind of goes around in this circle of differentiation. Um, we, and this is a good way of remembering what the positive or negative effect is going to have on your differentiation. And if you know the positive ne or negative effects of your differentiation, then we can just use this circle in reverse for integration. So go this way to differentiate, this way to integrate. So we can do things really quickly like integrate sine x. You effectively just start at the sine uh, part of your circle and go backwards around the circle so it till it's minus cos. So the integral of sine is minus cos plus c. Um, and ln of x as well. If we remember the derivative of ln of x being 1 over x, then the integral of 1 over x must be ln of x. They are the reverse process of each other, and don't forget to plus the c. Um, but for a reason I'm just about to show you in a second, the actual answer to this thing here is going to be ln of the modulus of x plus c. Reason being is that you can't put negative numbers into this function. If you remember back to the log section, if you've got log base, I don't know, 2 of minus 5, this thing here does not exist. You're not allowed to put minus numbers inside a logarithm. So to fix that, uh, we have to put modulus symbols around the x in our ln integration. Reason being is if you wanted to calculate the um, integral of 1 over x between minus 2 and minus 3, you'd integrate using respect to x. So 1 over x integrates to ln x sub in the values, and all of a sudden you get an invalid calculation if you don't have the modulus symbols. If you do have the modulus symbols and you've done it correctly, then you can replace the minus 2 and the minus 3 in, and you get minus a uh, ln of 2 minus ln of 3. Uh, calculate, uh, and remember the answer should be positive. Okay, so in this case here, we get 0.41. Um, notice that um, using the positive values will give an area which is equivalent to the one we want. If we work out the area between 2 and 3, we're going to work out the area between minus 2 and 3 symmetrically on the other side. Um, so yeah, basically, if you're integrating 1 over x, it's ln modulus x is your answer. Now, for some slightly more complicated integrals, we get some help in the formula booklet. And this, this is a, a set of rules for differentiation. So why are we looking at the differentiation part of the formula booklet if, we want, if we're on a chapter of integration? Well, remember, if we're going from left to right being differentiation, then we can actually go from right to left being integration. So the, so the integral, for example, of sec squared is tan. The integral of sec tan is sec. The integral of minus cosec x squared is cot. The integral of cosec cot is cosec. So we can use the differentiation part of the formula booklet to help us with our integration. Now we'll leave it up in the top left there and we've got a few other 
integrals that we um, remember. Remember e to the x just in differentiates to itself, so it must integrate back to itself as well. Right then, let's get on with the first question then. So it's going to be the integral of 2 cos x plus 3 over x minus the square root of x. The first thing I'd probably do here is to rewrite the square root as an indice. And it would be worth writing 3 over x as 3 times 1 over x until you get used to this type of integral a little bit more. Now we're going to integrate all of these three components individually. And what might be handy as well to have is the integration circle for sine and cos. So just so that we remember what integrates to what. So in this case here we've got cos. Cos will integrate back around the circle to sine. Remember the arrows indicate differentiation rather than integration. You have to work backwards for integration. So cos integrates to sine. So the first part here is going to be um, 2 times sine x. The next part is the 1 over x. The 1 over x integral integrates into ln of modulus x, so it's going to be 3 times ln modulus x. And in the last case here, we're going to use the first year rule of integration where we've got indices. You increase the power by 1 on your indice and you divide by the new power on your indice. If we were to try to do this with x to the minus 1, like we have in this question here, 1 over x is the same as x to the minus 1, you would increase the power by 1 and then divide by your new power. And we've got a divide, division by 0 here, so we have to treat 1 over x differently, um, but most of the indices we're going to treat it in this way here. So in this case here, the final answer um, at the back there is going to be x. We're going to increase the half to 3 over 2. And then we divide by 3 over 2. And when we divide by 3 over 2, 1 divided by 3 over 2 is effectively the same as doing 1 over 1 times 2 over 3. You kiss and flip the second fraction. So it's 2 thirds. And then obviously we've got to plus c on the end. So there we are. That's the answer to that integration question. Now let's move on to the next one. Much more difficult one, this one. Integral of cos x over sine squared x minus 2e to the x. Now with the first component here, the bit on the left hand side of this integral here, we're going to be using one of these integration rules. So what we'll do first is we'll rewrite this cos x over sine squared x first so that it hopefully looks like one of these things on the right hand side of our derivatives. So in this case here, we're going to rewrite the left-hand side as cos x over sin x times 1 over sin x. So in that case, we get cot x cosec x. And in fact, it's the bottom one here that we're going to be using here. Now in this case here, it's positive cot cosec. So in that case, there's a minus in its derivative. So they're going to, we're going to balance that out by having an answer that's going to have a minus in front of it. So use the integration patterns that we've got from the formula booklet, and it's going to be minus cosec x minus 2e to the x, because that integrates to itself. OK, so in this question here, we had to, we had to um, manipulate the formula booklet a little bit because there is a negative symbol in front of the cot cosec on the derivative. So if we want the integral there, if we've got an integration question where that sign is positive, then we can always negate the cosec um, from the original function. Sometimes people will call these antiderivatives. Okay, it's basically what would you get if you were to um, differentiate um, this function here? This is the function you'd have to differentiate to get that one there. Okay, so using the formula booklet there is quite useful. And a question um, with a problem attached to it as well. We've got the integral between the boundaries of 3a and a. Remember, the way that we sort these out is we substitute 3a into our answer and then subtract a being substituted into our answer. And we've got the function 2x plus 1 over x dx. Now, the first thing I would do with this um, fraction here is to split it up into two separate fractions, both with x on the denominator. So it's the integral of 2x over x, that's just 2, plus 1 over x. Now if you remember the way that we integrate numbers, just a reminder, 7x will differentiate to 7, so it must work in the opposite way around as well. 7 must integrate to 7x. So in this case here, same with 2, 2 is going to integrate to 2x. 
and then it's going to be plus ln modulus x. Now remember we don't need the plus c for the definite integral, um, a reminder of that is in the lower sixth material. So now we're going to substitute in 3a and take away a substituted in, and we're going to simplify our answer here then, so it's going to be 6a plus ln 3a minus 2a minus ln a, and simplifying this we get 4a plus ln 3a over a, the a's can cancel there so it's going to be 4a plus ln 3, and if we're finding the exact value of a and we're told that this thing is equal to ln 12, then what we can do then is set it equal to ln 12 minus ln 3 onto the other side. When you're subtracting logarithms, you divide the numbers inside those logarithms. So it's 12 divided by 3 is 4. So in this case here, let's quarter both sides now. So a is going to be a quarter ln 4. Right then, your turn to have a go. We've got two pages of questions here then. The first one is here. and uh, So pause the video and we'll try this question out to start with. Right then, let's go through this answer then. So it's, first of all, I've seen that we've got some trigonometry here. So just on the side of my page, I'm going to write the circle of differentiation uh, for sine and cos so that I can use it in the reverse way. So sine integrates back to minus cos. So it's going to be minus 5 cos x for the first part. e to the x, well, that integrates to itself because it differentiates to itself. And then 4 over x, we're going to think of this as 4 times 1 over x until we get a bit better at these. 1 over x integrates to ln x, and then we add c. The next part here would probably be better, better before we start integrating to um, write these as indices. Apart from the first one here, the x to the power of minus 1 is not a good idea to write as an indice because it's not integrated that way. For the x to the minus, for the x, 3 over x squared, we're definitely going to write that as 3x to the minus 2, and then it'll be minus 4 cos x. <clears throat> so let's start integrating here. 1 over x integrates to 2 ln x. For the second one here, we're going to increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So it's going to be 3 divided by minus 1. That's going to make it minus 3. And then for the second bit here, minus cos integrates to minus sine. So it's going to be minus 4 sine x. And this will all be plus c. OK, next set of questions then. Your turn to have a go at these four questions here. You might need the formula booklet to have a go at these. Pause the video and try these four questions out. Right then, let's start to have a go at this one then. So sec squared first. Well, sec squared, I know the derivative of tan is sec squared, so it must be the case that it was 3 tan that differentiated to make sec squared. So the answer here is 3 tan x. For the second one here, I'm going to rewrite this function here as, um, actually, I think what I'll show you now is that this half here, this is still 1 half. Now what I can do is I can effectively factorize it out to the front of my integral, kind of like factorizing. And then 1 over sine squared, that is the same as cosec squared dx. So we'll leave the half at the front and now we'll do our integration. Cosec squared, well on the right hand side of this differentiation column here, I know that cot will have, will have differentiated to give me minus cosec squared. So in this case here my answer is going to be minus cot x and then plus c on the end and um, because I would like the integral of positive cosec squared so that to balance that out, I'm going to need a minus sign on the other side of my formula booklet sheet. The next one here, what I'll probably do with this one here is I'll probably split this up into two separate fractions with the denominator the same on both of them. Now hopefully with both of these, they're going to simplify to something from the formula booklet. I've just done the first question here. 
Um, so this was cosec squared. And with this one here, it's going to be cos over sine, which is cot, and there's going to be a cosec on the bottom as well. So it's going to be cosec x cot x dx. Now let's use the formula booklet patterns here. We've got cosec, that integrates to minus cot. We've just done that one. And then for cosec cot, we want the integral of the positive version of this. So to balance that out, we're going to need a negative sign on the other side. So it's going to be minus cosec x plus c. And the final one here is going to be cosec squared 1 minus cot squared. So in this case here, let's get started. Um, expanding the brackets, we're going to get sec squared. Now the second part here looks a little bit suspicious to me. 1 over cos squared times minus cos squared over sine squared, because that's what cot is. Cot is cos over sine, so cot squared is cos squared over sine squared. The cos squareds can cancel out here, so I'm just going to get minus 1 over sine squared, which is cosec squared dx. Now in this case here, sec squared integrates to tan x and minus cosec squared. If I hadn't scribbled on the formula booklet already, I'd see that minus cosec squared will integrate back to positive cot x. So there we are. So sometimes with these, they're really, they are quite complicated and you have to use the reverse methods from the differentiation part of your formula booklet. So you have lots of practice at um, exercise uh, 11a and uh, yeah make sure you have lots of practice before we can move on because we're going to move on to some really hard integration stuff I'd much rather you be really good at the basics before we start to build up the complexity thanks very much for watching